everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Alumni Perspectives podcast. In today's episode, we will be talking about the growth of minimalism with our Akia alumni, Han Tang. Welcome, Han. Thanks, Jessica. So to start us off, can you tell us a little about who you are, what you do, and an exciting fact about yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name's Han and I graduated from the University of Queensland last year with a Bachelor of Advanced Finance and Economics. So currently right now I'm a risk consultant um, with EY in the Brisbane office, which has been super fun. And I've been able to work on a whole bunch of different engagements with clients from different industries. I guess something like a fun fact or something that was really cool that I was able to, to that was related to work was that EY actually sent me to America um, to Disney World for this one week conference and everything was paid for, which was really sweet, which I really loved. So yeah. Damn, that sounds very, that sounds very fun and exciting. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so in today's conversation, we will delve into the topic of minimalism, a concept which has taken Australia and China by storm. Can you share with us what minimalism is and why has it become so popular in today's society? Yeah, so I guess minimalism means different things to different people. But for me, what minimalism means to me is being able to live a more intentional life, whether that's with your decisions or your actions or your purchasing habits. And I think the reason why it's becoming such a big thing, especially in today's society, is that we're constantly being bombarded with all these advertising and marketing to buy consumer products and making sure you're keeping up with the latest trends. And I think to an extent that can be quite tiring, um, both mentally and physically. And I think there's been a bigger push towards being able to live a more simple life and being able to express gratitude with the things that we already have and being able to appreciate the people that uh, in our lives and minimalism is just one of the ways that is you that you're able to achieve that so I think that's also one of the reasons why um, it's become quite big recently yeah that that definitely makes sense um, so before I have heard of minimalism being very prevalent in the space of fashion and interior design are there any aspects where this concept can be applied yeah for sure and I think, yeah, when people think about minimalism, I think a lot of people immediately think of like this really hippie sort of concept where I'm only going to have one shirt and one bowl, one, like one pair of cutlery. And some people may decide to do that. That's, that's might how we decide how to live their minimalism life. And obviously that's not for everyone. But yes, apart from things like your clothing or like the physical items that you, <clears throat> that you own, minimalism can be applied to like various aspects of your life. And I think the one that I sort of inter interpret the most is how I spend my time. So making sure that I'm spending my time how I want to and making sure that the decisions I make with what I decide to do with my time add value to my life and it's something that I genuinely enjoy. There's no point in me saying yes to every social outing if, I'm, if I know that I'm not going to enjoy that. And although, yes, minimalism, a big part of it is about the physical items that you own, there is also that sort of flow and effect where it does also impact your mental abilities and the way you think and your perspectives as well. So I guess minimalism can start out from that physical aspect sort of thing, but it flows onto many different aspects of your life as well. Yeah. So continuing on from that, how do you think minimalism has impacted you as an individual? Yeah, so I know initially when I was younger, just like a lot of other people, they'd be trying to find like the latest fashion trends or what's trending and they really wanted to own the new iPhone or the new XYZ or whatever it was. Um, and I definitely was like that in the past. But I've, what I've found is that there's been this gradual, um, I guess, change in mindset towards how I approach buying items and physical, physical products. And I think that's really helped me a lot in terms, in, in a whole bunch of different ways. One of which includes 
being able to spend less money and actually saving a lot more money. Like having that extra money in the bank account, not having to impulse buy every time I go window shopping and things like that, because I'm very intentional with the way I try to purchase my items. That's, that's definitely impacted um, my life. Another way is that, and as bizarre as it sounds, and I know this definitely sounded bizarre when I first heard it, was the concept of having less physical clutter translates to having less mental clutter. And I didn't seem to comprehend how that worked. How could having less items physically in your space, how could that result and lead to like mental clarity? And so I remember an experiment one day and get, got rid of a lot of things in my room, including this really big shelf on my desk with all these little like, decorations and memorabilia. And although I didn't immediately feel the impacts of that, what I noticed was about a week or two later, there was this moment where it just clicked where I was very in tune with my thoughts. I could think a lot more clearly than I could before and I could concentrate a lot better. And from there, that's really translated to better focus at, in work and with friendships and with relationships. And I think having the having fewer physical items in my physical space meant that my eyes weren't being distracted. And so that meant that because I could think more clearly, I could really dedicate the time to do what I really wanted to do, um, whether that's trying to imp like upskill in, like if I wanted to learn a new language or if I wanted to learn a new skill, I was able to a better concentrate on doing that because of, the concept of minimalism because I had less stuff in my life and I had that increased mental clarity when it came to things like learning. Yeah, that's very interesting. The link between like decluttering and also like also decluttering like your mind. So to wrap up our talk today, for those who want to try adopting minimalism into their lifestyle, what are some tips you can provide to make sure that they can reap the benefits of having such a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, I think when people think of minimalism, they think they have to get rid of everything in their life. And that's not the intent of minimalism. And I think a lot of people think that minimalism is the same thing as decluttering. But to me, I think decluttering is only step one of the minimalism journey in a more intentional and meaningful life. And so my advice and my recommendation is to start small. You don't have to Marie Kondo your entire life and remove everything that you don't use or that you don't find value in because that in itself is quite a daunting and sometimes confronting step. I think what's really important is that baby steps can really help. So getting rid of things here and there um, can really add up over the span of weeks, months, or even a whole year. So making sure you're, you're starting small and really thinking about whether an item that you own really adds value to your life. Something I'd highly recommend is if you, um, there's this duo called The Minimalists. Um, essentially, they're, they're these guys who used to live these really high flying corporate lives and decided that it, they weren't cut out to do that and they wanted to live a more meaningful life. But they have something called The Minimalism Game, which is on the first of every month, um, you, on the first day of the month, you get rid of one item. And then on the second day, you get rid of two items and so on and so forth until you reach the last day of the month. So let's say um, in October, um, there's 31 days in October. So on the 31st day, you would have removed 31 items on that day. And so you're gradually building up the amount of things you get rid of so that there's that snowball effect. You, um, as long as you can start small and have that momentum to keep going, that's a great way to start your minimalism journey and hopefully being able to reap the benefits of minimalism just like I have. Thank you. So, Han, it's been so great to have you here today to talk about the topic of the growth of minimalism. A huge thank you for taking time out of your day to chat with us. And I hope our listeners have learned a little more about the concept of minimalism because I, I know I definitely have. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.